So this morning we, we talked about different types of kidney doctors. They're all known as kidney doctors, but there are nephrologists, urologists, and kidney surgeons, or trans, kidney transplant surgeons. So, so far we have had lectures by a good number of nephrologists and at least one kidney transplant surgeon, Dr. Donald Defoe. Now, in the last part of today's World Kidney Day, I'd like to introduce to you our next two speakers, followed by our featured performer. So, this is uh, University of California, Irvine, Medical Center, also known as UCI Health. This is the UCI Health World Kidney Day, since we have live broadcast on Facebook and other social media. So please uh, feel free to follow us uh, on different uh, social media platform, platforms, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and others. And if you have suggestions for UCI Kidney Health, please let us know. So our next speaker, is Dr. Rami Yakub, who is a urologist. Again, remember, urologists are other kidney doctors who are surgeons. Nephrologists are kidney doctors who are internists. Urologists are surgeons. And when you need surgery or you need to repair of the urinary tract and, and related structures, these are urologists who can help you. So Dr. Rami Yakub will talk about what can urologists do to help your kidneys? Please join me to welcome Dr. Yonko. Thank you, Dr. Kantor, for this uh, wonderful invitation and cheering for this uh, wonderful uh, event. Uh, in the next few minutes, uh, I'd like to share with you what we do in urology uh, to help your kidney and uh, kidney function. Uh, I think everything we do in urology is really eventually to help your kidney and help your kidney function, but I will uh, speak about three common problems that we encounter a lot uh, in, in urology. Uh, so kidney stones. Kidney stones are very prevalent. Uh, almost The prevalence now is 10%. Uh, so almost 1 in 10 or 1 in 11 person will get a uh, kidney stone in their lifetime. So you look into the room, so some of us will get kidney stones in their lifetime. And the problem I call it the stone disease. So anyone who will get kidney stones, there is um, almost 50% chance of getting a recurrent kidney stone in the next few years. Uh, so here at UCI, uh, as surgeons, as urologists, we don't only treat stones by uh, surgery. We also do a very comprehensive metabolic evaluation to study your numbers. So we do a 24-hour urine collection test. Uh, we look to everything in your urine, including the uh, urine volume, the concentration of salts like calcium, oxalate, citrate, the urine pH, the salt in urine, uh, to know why you are forming kidney stones, and then work with you with very specific dietary interventions based on, the, based on these numbers, or direct medical therapy, so certain medications specifically based on the abnormality uh, is specific for you as, uh, as a patient. Um, uh, we also, of course, treat also painful kidney stones and uh, when they cause obstruction and damage your kidney function. So we have all the new technologies. Uh, we go with camera inside the ring effect and we have tiny laser fibers. We can break these stones. We can take them with baskets or um, tools and, and then leave you stone free. So we can do this in a very minimally invasive fashion without the need for open surgery. And actually we just, uh, at UCI, we just got the uh, newest technology for shockwave by Strepsi, this is like a 2019 model. We have uh, a room uh, fully equipped um, with the best uh, newest technology, very effective, uh, and this is the least invasive way of treating kidney stones. So we do all the surgical interventions, the metabolic evaluation, the medical therapy uh, to work with you on prevention of um, kidney stones and treating any uh, kidney stones. The, the second common issue that we see all the time is uh, kidney masses. And uh, I'm not going to 
talk about advanced kidney cancer. Uh, nowadays, with imaging for different medical uh, purposes, we discover a lot of small real masses. So a small real mass is a mass like this, a four centimeter in your kidney. Now, 24% of these masses are benign. So um, in the past, we used to assume everything is cancerous, and we do surgeries, and we expose like uh, uh, patients to risk of surgery. But in 24%, they can be benign. So we do recommend here at UCI getting a biopsy, which can be done in the office or can be done with our intervention colleagues, so we can know what is the nature of this mass. Now, sometimes we should, we can just even observe them if they are small and not really progressing, so we can watch you with uh, all the imaging modalities that we have, ultrasound, CT, MRI, in certain intervals, like early on, maybe every three to six months, and then maybe annually, if, if it's not growing, sometimes we don't really touch them. Uh, but definitely, we have all the many, many invasive modalities, laparoscopic surgery, robotic surgery. We can do a, a, a very complex surgery to take the tumor out and leave the rest of the kidney so we can maintain your kidney function. And usually, our nephrology colleagues are very helpful for us to maintain uh, these uh, patients uh, away from dialysis as much as we can. Um, uh, so we, we work with them also to, uh, to, to help you to maintain your kidney function uh, so you don't end in... Uh, losing your kidney function and in, in, in the analysis as much as we can. Uh, but what is even more interesting is we have the least invasive modalities even for treatment of cancer. So sometimes we do what we call cryoablation. Cryo means freezing and ablation means to kill the tumor. Uh, so this is really uh, done by most of the time by the head of our interventional radiologist. Uh, you come to the hospital, uh, we take you to the radiology suite, then we can insert needle guided by imaging into, into the mass, into the kidney cancer, and just freeze them. And by this, we are killing the cancer, and we can definitely follow the patient after working with imaging, but it's a, the least invasive modality. It, it maintains the kidney function. Um, we observe you after the procedure for four hours. Uh, most of these patients will not have any pain or uh, complications, and uh, it's really effective for the small real masses, uh, definitely when it is less than three centimeters in a, in a in a position that we can do uh, this. So even sometimes we don't need to do a surgery, we can treat you with the least invasive modality. Uh, another common example that I like to share is you, we see a lot in neurology. So men, when they get older, they get uh, an enlarged prostate, and this prostate actually can, they can start to frequently urinate, uh, run to the restroom all the time, and then it can obstruct the air flow uh, and cause urine tension. So when you come to see us in the office, we usually uh, scan your bladder with just a, a bladder ultrasound and, and make sure you're not retaining too much. But if we leave it longer, actually it may cause back pressure in your kidneys and then you end with deterioration of the kidney function and uh, in complicated cases even they can end with renal failure. So definitely we don't like this to happen so we recommend that uh, uh, men when they have these problems they have attention to it and they come to see uh, a, a urologist. Uh, we can treat early on with lifestyle modifications, and then I would say 80% of my patients are just treated well with medical therapy, so there are, there are certain medications that can help these problems. But we also have all the surgical modalities here. Uh, either we do it in the OR as a, a minimum invasive surgery that actually spend like one night at the hospital, uh, something called TURB, trans urease resection of the prostate, and you go with camera and just take slices out so we can open a channel for flow or sometimes you use a green light laser um, to, to treat this uh, prostate. And nowadays even we have a very minimally invasive procedure that we can do in the office with local anesthesia without the need even for taking you to the OR or admit you. Uh, so you can see here in this picture, um, when the prostate grow, it really strict the urethra, the channel for urine flow, but we can apply treatment. Uh, every treatment here with resume modality um, it takes a few seconds, maybe we apply four or six times, and then a few months later we end with wider the channel for flow. Uh, and this can be done under local NCD in the office. Another a good procedure called ULEP, where we actually just apply clips and it can open the channel for flow and give uh, relief from obstruction. Uh, so really what I'd like to share with you today is whether you have a kidney stone or a kidney mass or an enlarged prostate obstructing the air flow or any um, common urologic problem, um, we have all the modalities between the evaluation, the medical treatment, the surgical treatment, 
um, in, in many basic fashion, and even sometimes uh, without the need for doing uh, a major surgery in the OR under general anesthesia. So if you have any of these issues or any problem related to your uh, kidney that needs surgical uh, intervention or surgical attention, uh, please feel free to come and see me or see one of my urology colleagues. We have different locations and we would love to help you and we always cooperate with our nephrology colleagues so we can work on really all the surgical and medical problems in your kidney so you can save your kidney function and enjoy uh, this kidney function uh, for your life. Thank you. Thank you very much. So now our second urologist colleague, Dr.